Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at a uh, drag force that depends on the velocity of the object. So as the speed of the object increases, the drag force increases until you reach something called terminal velocity, where the object is no longer accelerating. So the difficulty in these is that they lead to a differential equation, and we're going to have to solve that differential equation uh, and then eventually find a velocity function uh, as a function of time. Um, so we get started with a free body diagram, straight and simple. We're going to make down the positive direction in this problem. And after the free body diagram, we always go to Newton's second law. So net force is equal to ma. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to make down the positive direction as stated. So mg minus the drag force is going to equal ma. Now, they're going to tell us something about the drag force. It depends on velocity, but how does it depend on velocity? Uh, it's just a constant, the drag coefficient, b, times the velocity. So we're going to put that in. So mg minus bv is equal to m. Here's our differential equation. We write acceleration as the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Now we're going to use a technique called separation of variables here. We're going to get everything with t on one side of the equal sign, everything with v on the other. So multiplying by dt, we get this. dt times ugliness here is equal to m times dv. Now I got a v on the right and I got a v on the left. <clears throat> I have to divide everything on the left by that ugliness to get the v over to the other side. And I'm going to end up dividing both sides by m as well. It's not 100% necessary, but that's the way I like to do it. So we get a cancel over here. We're going to divide by m on both sides. So we get then 1 over m dt is equal to 1 over mg minus bv dv. Now we're at the point where we've separated our variables, and we're going to integrate both sides. m is a constant, so we can leave it out of the integral, and over here we've got the integral of all that fun stuff. Now here we have two choices. We can either go the route of indefinite integrals, which we get a constant of integration, or we can use limits of integration so we don't have to deal with that messy constant. I prefer the latter. So our limits over here, we're integrating with respect to time. So our starting time is 0. Our ending time is time t. And on the right-hand side, <clears throat> let's say that this object starts from rest. So we've got an initial velocity of 0 and an ending velocity of v. And that's what we're going to be solving for. All right. So now, at this point, I would invite you to pause the video and you go ahead and try and do the integration by yourself. The one on the left side is a piece of cake. The one on the right side requires a u substitution. So stop the video now. Try and do it on your own. Get as far as you can get. And then restart the video and see how you did. So I'm going to go ahead and do the integrations. Integration of dt is t. And we're plugging our limits. t minus 0 is t. So we get t over m here. <clears throat> and then on the right hand side, I'm going to use my substitution here, u is equal to mg minus bv, and we're going to take the derivative of that du is equal to derivative of mg, that's a constant, so that's 0, uh, minus derivative of bv is just b times dv. Divide both sides by negative b, so we get negative 1 over b du is equal to dv. At this point, we're going to plug that in for dv up above. We're going to plug that in uh, for, sorry, yeah, plug that in for u. Replace u, replace that with u, uh, and away we go. So moving on to the next page here, we have t over m still on the left-hand side. Uh, and we have the integral of 1 over u du, and we have a negative 1 over b out front there. Now, word about the limits here, we can change our limits so that they're in terms of u, or we can just do the interval, plug our u substitution back in, and don't have to worry about changing the limits. I prefer to do it that way. So, we have negative 1 over b. Integral of 1 over u is natural log. And since it can never be negative, we put it in absolute values. And now let's go ahead and plug our u substitution back in. It was, uh, no, it was mg minus bv. So plugging that back in, we have negative 1 over b, natural log of mg minus bv. Now dealing with the absolute value here, um, 
you know, looking back at our free body diagram, mg uh, is always going to be bigger than bv until they hit terminal velocity, and then they're going to be equal to each other. So we can make the argument that bv is never going to be bigger than mg, therefore the stuff in the argument and the natural log is never going to be negative, so we can get rid of the absolute value. So let's dispense with the absolute value <clears throat> and just turn it into a parenthesis. So now we can go back and use our original limits, 0 to v, and we still have a t over m on that. So now plugging in the limits, um, usually when we plug in the zero limit, uh, it gives us something trivial and it goes away, but this time that's not the case. So we do need to be careful with that zero limit. So we have a negative one over b, and it's a natural log of plugging in the first limit here. We're going to go mg minus bv, and that's minus the natural log of plugging in the second limit. We get mg minus zero, which is mg. And that's multiplied by the negative 1 over b out front. Now we're going to use the property of logarithms. We're subtracting two logs, so we can put them as one log with them divided uh, by each other. So 1 over b, natural log, mg minus bv, all over mg. And still equal to t over m. Now, this is a decent amount of algebra understand that we still need to solve for v in this equation. We haven't done that yet. Uh, but on the AP test, you will have gotten all of the points or all but one of the points at this point. They generally do not punish you for algebra. So it's my recommendation that once you hit this point, you've integrated correctly, you've done everything correctly. It's just algebra from there. Probably leave this problem, move on to something else. If you've got time at the end of the test, come back and do the algebra, okay? We're going to finish with the algebra, which means we need to solve for v. So getting the negative 1 over b to the other side, we have negative tb over m, and that's equal to natural log of, let's go ahead and divide those, simplify it, 1 minus bv over mg. All right, going on to the next page. So now we're going to get rid of the natural log. To do that, we raise both sides to a power of e. So we have e to the negative bt over m. And raising log to a power of e gets rid of the log. So we get 1 minus bv over mg on this side. Remember, we're still trying to solve for v here, right? So let's add bv over mg and subtract e to the stuff. So we get bv over mg on the left now is equal to 1 minus e to the stuff. And multiplying by mg over b to solve for v, we have now done it. And there you go. Uh, we should always check after doing this amount of algebra to make sure that our equation gives us things that make sense. You don't really have to do this on the AP test, but I'm going to show you why it makes sense uh, here. So the velocity at time 0 is 0. Remember, this thing started at rest. So if we plug in 0 to the equation, we get mg over b times 1 minus e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we end up with 0 meters per second for our initial velocity. That's lovely. Uh, now, also, if this thing falls for a sufficiently long length of time, we would expect it to reach terminal velocity. Terminal velocity, remember, is when there's no longer any acceleration. So your mg is equal to bv. And if that's the case, then your terminal velocity is mg over b. So does this equation that we derive give us that for sufficiently long fall time? So let's go ahead and take the limit as t goes to infinity of our function and see what we get. So we've got then mg over b times 1 minus e to the negative infinity, essentially, right? So that's 1 over infinity, that's 0. So we have 1 minus 0 inside our parentheses, which gives us 1, so we end up with mg over b. Same thing that we got doing it the easy way. So our equation seems to make sense. We're done. Once you have actually integrated and plugged in the limits on this problem on the AP test, I would then run away. But if you got time, go back and do the algebra. That's it for this one.